Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. And we're here with Matt Carpenter. He's just sexy. Uh, well, first of all, wouldn't you agree? Oh, uh, totally. Totally. <laughs> so, Matt, why don't you tell tell everyone, other than just uh, being sexy, what your 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 role here is at Grimm and what you're doing today? I am a principal security researcher in charge of critical infrastructure. I know it sounds terrible. In fact, they even expect me to sell sometimes. <sighs> they buy me soap so I can take a shower afterwards. <laughs> but in the end, uh, it, it's about taking the passion of me and the guys that, that I've been graced with and kicking ass and making the world a better place. It's awesome. we, had a, we had a business meeting of all the leadership. And we, we went to this podunk North Carolina place and went up in a cabin. We sat around and talked about strategy and you know the path forward. One of the coolest things in that entire weekend was talking about what we really care about. And people's personal freedom came up, like worldwide. No shit. Yeah, I won't go into the details of what the conversation entailed, but it was cool to look around at the leadership and recognize we all actually give a shit about people. At the end of the day, everything's about people, even vulnerabilities. But, you know, but that really ties into IoT and critical infrastructure devices, for sure. IoT, is that Eye of the Tiger? Uh, yes, yes. I thought okay. that was your theme song. That's why. <laughs> you don't want me to dance with the vodka. It does not end well. How many of the guests come in this well armed? He was armed. Eye yes. Of the tiger has to be played. We'll call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> not IOT, apparently. See, it helps to have good aim. <laughs> <laughs> so do we, let's talk more about critical infrastructure and some of the things you do uh, at Grimm. Absolutely. Before and then we'll do another segment about your your choice of topic. As well. So many people will understand that or will remember that I got my start in Power Grid and for hardware. I uh, had a had a very wonderful utility basically pay me to figure out how to hack hardware, and then transition into software exploitation from hardware. Um, so power electric they're very near and dear to my heart. We've moved into oil and gas as well, uh, but transportation is where it's all at right now with. Um, so much going on with the OEMs, with tiers, them trying to make sense of all this w before legislation comes down and kicks them in the ass. Um, but we also represent great stuff in aviation mm -hmm. and hacking drones and planes. Um, so I mean, it was incredible, awesome fun, medical devices, the whole gamut. Um, and all those platforms are so different and do you think that that helps security or hurts security? They're or? not. They're not different. You may have a CAN bus or an Ethernet switch, but in the end, I think one of the things that makes Grimm so awesome is that our guys really reduce everything, be it an automotive ECU or a pacemaker or a power meter, down to a circuit board with some microcontrollers on it. Mm -hmm. Packets traveling across the wire. Exactly. Sorry. So we've got, you know, you've got my, the, some core bus types that make up the entire communications on the PCB, but how they interact with the outside world, you know, that's just frosting. It's the spice of life. Yeah. So we can take what we knew about power meters and uh, C1219 and 1218, 1222, and shove that into a CAN bus approach where the technologies on the communications differ, but the end result isn't. You st it doesn't differ. You still have to secure the devices from physical attack, from uh, logical, logical attack, attack. From, from communication attacks, from external, from internal, from, yeah, from vulnerabilities, uh, bugs in old code, bugs in new code, update bugs, everything. And when you rip off the firmware, <laughs> uh, even firmware updating is very similar among most things. And when you, rip, when you rip off the firmware, you still have buffer overflows. You still have, actually, you have a lot more of the fun stuff of old because they haven't figured out how to secure that stuff, even to a cellular phone style. Not right. that cellular phones are very good. <laughs> hey, my Android device is secure. Yeah, yeah, really? Would you like to test that? You, you know why they stopped hacking uh, and jailbreaking iPhones? It's because they don't need to. 
right. anymore. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> Actually, I think it was Wired. That, I don't know if you read the piece, but Wired ran a piece. Seriously? They found like the guy that was still doing it and like did it live for the <laughs> journal. And he's like, yeah, I don't, we don't do it anymore because the community got broken up and then like there's really no need to do it anymore. Buddy of mine and I keep talking, going around and around about PGP encrypted emails. And I, I use a ton of PGP encrypted emails, but I won't put my keys on my phone. And he says, why? You think your phone is more secure than your laptop? Code-wise, probably not. But the things that I do to secure and get my laptop off of the networks, sure. Because my phone never goes off the network. Mm. Well, then, back, in the, uh, back in the first days of broadband, everybody was worried. It's an always-on connection. Oh, my God, I'm going to get hacked. Okay, not enough people even, were thinking that. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> next, so we, roll in, we roll in, we're hacking on a, a power meter head end. So the one box that can take out an entire segment of the grid. And there was a mobile interface on it. And, and actually, Kevin Johnson and I were working together, and Kevin says, what the fuck, man? Who puts a mobile interface on the thing that can take down the grid? Some, somebody is not getting that your phone is an attack surface that is always on and a bridge into everybody's network that you allow out. I, I, know who put, to. I know who put a mobile interface on a, on, a, on a grid head end. It was the company that said, we can sell a mobile interface for the grid head end for an extra oh $5,000. Let's be honest, right? I would love to drop names just because it was that bad, but I won't. Last time I did that, it was really bad. <laughs> All of my friends got sued or strong armed or really just yeah. Well, you've worked things. in a, a sensitive industries over over the past. Yeah, let, let's litigate, not fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen a, a change in the tides in that of more in critical infrastructure wanting to fix rather than Some. litigate or sweep things under the rug? I, I think that the, it is yet to get taken out of the arsenal, and this is the problem because until we take it off the table. Security researchers will continue to have to deal with that as a possibility. Um, I, I got to tell you, it's kind of relevant. I just left a talk before coming over here uh, with the, the FBI uh, and EFF. They're now working together. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, something called Cyber Ninjas. Mm. Uh, so uh, the EFF and the FBI are working together. And if you have something that you're looking to do and you're not sure if it's legal, you can actually talk to them and they will help you determine if it's legal and they will help you do it. Uh, they figure it's cheaper to help people do these things and research these things than it is to start an investigation. And so you see, I didn't dollars. do anything wrong. I, I didn't say you did. No, no, no let me back up because I need to paint the context and, and say why that's a great option, but only about 10% of the solution. Oh, they don't, they, don't, because they, they, they don't think it's a full solution. At the end of the day, it's a great idea. at the end of the day, it's not the FBI that decides who to sue when you're talking civil suit. Agreed. It's, agreed, it's agreed, agreed. the company that owns the yeah. technology or intellectual Let's property. Let's see. Yeah. You have one lawyer on part-time. We've got two dozen. And we're hiring more just for you. I mean, th this is not the way that we want the chessboard set up. Agreed entirely. Agreed entirely. But I was just saying it's some one good point. That's great. No, I appreciate that. I, I want a mousetrap. Like, the companies come in and any hint of abuse and bullying and they just get their head chopped off. Yes, I just said that on your show. <laughs> and the lawsuit's <laughs> rolling! <laughs> Not literally! <laughs> the views and opinions expressed on this show don't necessarily <laughs> reflect those of Security Weekly. Or the sponsors. Security <laughs> Weekly was recorded in three vodkas and... No, <laughs> So, Matt, what else are you working on? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this really cool classified thing that I can't tell you about, but I really got it. Matt, what do you do for fun that's not classified? <laughs> do, you, do you hack around on drones? Do you do some, some drone stuff? Absolutely. But, I mean, most of my life is not classified right now. In fact, all of my work right now that pays my bills is, is not classified. Um, that's one of the cool things about Grimm. We've got both sides. Uh, we swing both ways. The, the government, and, uh, and then commercial. And so far, I've been able to, to hang on the commercial for most of my work. Um, I like to throw a frisbee around with my kids. I like to ride motorcycle. I like to get caught in the rain. Um, Long walks? <laughs> this is where we just put the microphone in just, just to see what he's going to say next. <laughs> I like pina coladas and, you know. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> Honestly, um, 
hanging out with my family is awesome. And then when I get to get up here with some of my buds, shooting people that work for me, <laughs> this is really cool. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I get to shoot people that work for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, not cool, dude. To be fair, I handed the gun to one of my employees a, a minute ago and said, hey, you want to shoot your boss? <laughs> Surprisingly, he was eager. <laughs> and how many vodkas had he had? <laughs> so we should probably ask some questions. Thank you. Um, famous hacker trivia, are you ready? I am ready. He infiltrated 97 U.S. military and NASA computers by installing a virus and deleting a few files. Uh, it was soon found that he was guilty of having hacked military and NASA websites from his girlfriend's aunt's house in London. Who was the hacker? Oh, this is like a real hacker? I thought this you were like talking movie hacker. hackers. No, wow, that's I weird. have movie hacker. We can do that next if, you, if you're Military. hanging there that long. Wow. I don't even know. Gary McKinnon. I don't even know who that is. I suck. Once I suck at time, people. Number two. Binary, I'm good. So I suck at people. The only way that I knew most of these was because I taught the Security Plus class <laughs> enough damn times. <laughs> Seriously. Once upon a time, the most wanted cyber criminal of the U.S. now... An affluent entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, put him back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kevin Mitnick. Kevin Mitnick, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Number all my three. friends had the sticker. They had the stickers made, actually. He was going back in time. Also known as the mentor. He was a member of a couple of hacker elite groups in the 1980s, most notably Legion of Doom, who battled for supremacy online against the masters of deception. However, his biggest claim to fame is that he is the author of the Hacker Manifesto, mm -hmm. which he wrote after he was arrested in 1986. You'd think that I'd remember his name. I'm linked in, connected to him, but I don't. I only remember him as the mentor. Um, Lloyd? What? Lloyd? Yep, that's that's him. Lloyd Blankship, right. Okay. Right. Very good. No, that's him. <laughs> that's him. I know that Is it Blankship or Blankenship? Blank and ship, yes. Blank okay. Ship. Sorry. Ha. Although, Ha. <laughs> He like trumped Alex Trebek. He was like, ha, you <laughs> smug bastard. You think you know all the answers. Trebek, you son of a whore. <laughs> I like the rapist for a thousand. <laughs> this is B-roll. I repeat, this is B-roll. Although, number four, although technically a phone freak. You should have my other side show up sometime later and we can actually do an interview. There. Sure. Although technically a phone freak. He is seen by many as the father of modern hackery and freaking, as well as being someone of a legend. Born in 1944, he began when he was informed by a friend that a toy whistle given away in a box of a particular brand oh. of cereal would emit a 2600 hertz tone. A, a particular brand of cereal. Let me, let me see. What was, that, what was that brand name? It wasn't Wozniak, because I, I, I thought it's you were going for Woz Lucky originally. Charles. Not Lucky Charles. <laughs> Dang it. Sometimes they have berries. 80s cereal for a thousand. Ah, cr Captain Crunch. Captain Thank Crunch. you. Do you know his real name? I don't. I John don't Draper. Okay, I did know, but I forget. He directs the Names of me, we don't no, agree. Number five. He directs. I don't like terms either. Terms suck. I like thingy. If you ever watch me talk, I, I use thingy a lot because I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, he's so cool. He just spoke in Greek letters. Go ahead. How many vodkas? <laughs> this is my first. He it's did tell me scarier. to say when, but I was pretty conservative. Number five, he directs the nonprofit organization 2600 Enterprises and publishes a magazine called the 2600 Hacker Quarterly. Oh, mister. I don't even know who that is. I Pseudonym wish I should. derived from fictional opposition leader in George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984. Really? Yes. <laughs> Matt's like, tell me more. No. no Matt's like, uh, hold on, indexing. Yes, it was a book and a movie. I just read it last year, actually, for the first time. It was really? a great book, yeah. You didn't do it in high school? No. It was one of those weird books. Everybody quoted it, but nobody really knew it. Nobody really read it. Everyone just yeah. really quoted Honestly, it. Honestly, it was Carl Heimer it. from uh, from MEDC that, that finally got me to read it after one of the automotive things last year. I'm like... Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, I, Emmanuel Goldstein. Emmanuel Goldstein, yes. the dude from uh, from Hackers. Yes, I know. Yes. Eric Corley's his real name. Yes. The creator of Pretty Good Privacy. 
pretty good privacy. Isn't you that? Said you use yeah, it. yeah. PGP. I, I use. Um, crap. You don't keep your keys on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Phil Katz. I know that, but uh, no. Um, correct first name. Correct first name. Uh, Phil, not Zimmerman. Yes. Yes. Is it? Zimmerman. Yes. yes. Zimmerman. Okay. Widely known as one of the fathers of the internet, he is the co-designer of the TCP IP protocols and architecture of the internet. He is the vice president and chief internet evangelist for Google. What? Two words, four Zero. letters each. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes Eric Schmidt. Anyway. Um, I suck at this. Hey, Ryan, Lifeline. <laughs> right. Seriously? Can you repeat the question? Do you guys not know your history? Widely known as one of the fathers of the internet. He's the co-designer of the TCP IP. Al Gore. <laughs> that is a very popular <laughs> answer to this question. Yeah. No, He's no. He's on the IATF. I, 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 know, I know who it is. I just, I'm really bad with names right now. Vint Cerf. Vint Cerf. Yep. He showed up at one of the uh, Power Grid meetings that, uh, that I was helping nice. do. He was highly influential in the development of... I didn't of realize he was at Google. The, uh, yes. Oh, cool. Of theoretical computer science, providing a formalization of the concepts of algorithm. Turing? And, wow, you are the quickest on that particular question. Very good. Ron Rivian. I hang out with Vizzy, so most of these people don't yeah. really enter into my thoughts. He does. Gotcha. Uh, number nine, Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Edelman, who first publicly described this algorithm in 1978. Um, 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 it's not PGP. Just kidding. Is RSA? Yes. <laughs> they hit you so hard. <laughs> number 10, he is credited with a number of innovations in firewalls, including building the first internet email server for whitehouse.gov domain and intrusion detection system. He said technical positions at many <laughs> companies. That's not Lance Spitzner, is it? Uh, no. You've met him? I am he's sure I have. The Gauntlet? Gauntlet firewall? Okay. I think he was at uh, TIS that built. That built Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Yeah. Yeah. I had to deal with Gauntlet like 15 years ago as a pile of. Tell yeah. me about my friends. I, I love Marcus Random. Oh, Marcus. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. He has serious hacking days and drives a Tesla and is frequently seen on CNN. Kristen Paget. Oh wait, no. And other he. news outlets and frequently does not wear pants when doing. Caught that. The interview. What? Oh, not Tom Liston. No. no. He frequently, well, whatever. <laughs> That's only around you about the pants. <laughs> Video conferencing has changed the world, man, I'm telling you. But not that much. Still don't see the pants. Say it again. Serious hacking days, drives a Tesla, drives appears on the news. Appears on the news. He's on Fox all the time. Oh, that's assuming I watch television. I don't, but I knew this. I Netflix with my kids, and that's about it. I know I know this one. Wait a second. It trusted sec. Yeah, no. Go for uh, it. Uh, what the, the software that he wrote is... Uh, a social engineering toolkit. Yes. Uh, artillery. Dave? Yes. yes. Really? Dave Kennedy, yes. Fuck. Yeah, I know my friends really well. <laughs> We're, we're, we're gift wrapping yes. a copy of this and sending know, it to him. Right? Yes. <laughs> I love Dave. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> he, he's depressed now. <laughs> Let's just end this early. The segment really sucked. That was, that was 11 <laughs> questions. I got one. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> or maybe two. For hanging. Thank you. Hanging I tough. Love you still. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Good stuff. Thank you, sir. Do we have any more interviews today? <laughs>